beautiful soul family and welcome back to on another level and um, I had God was showing me something this is when I was doing this um, I want to say study but uh, having a deeper look at the account <clears throat> that was going between Sarai and Hagar and I just I absolutely love it when the Holy Spirit teaches you know guides me shows me because um, Genesis the whole Bible <laughs> has a wealth of information and the thing about it is is that this is this is intimacy for me <laughs> I love to go into the Bible and it, it took a level of maturity and it says don't forsake you know don't forsake um, the training <clears throat> as you were a child <clears throat> my mom she would have us read the Bible we would have Bible studies and there are things that I would read you know and so there are different accounts that I remember and then you know it's there's different accounts that I remember from when I was younger but with maturity and with experience and with the Holy Spirit able to see more, able to understand more. And so what, you know, in Genesis chapter 16 and Gen Genesis chapter 15 and chapter 16, <laughs> they're both, you know, it's about Abram and it's about Sarai. And what's so interesting is that they both were going under they were they both were um suffering from fear from this energy of fear yet abram handled it a different way and um sarai handled that a different way meaning so in chapter 15 the beginning parts of chapter 15 and i guess on Abram had a fear about legacy and legacy is so important you know legacy is 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 connected to future generations it's connected to not just the quality not just the quantity but also the quality of it like what is the quality of what I am handing over you know there are people who have things taken away from them. But the one thing that I've learned in my life is that no matter when someone can take away your inheritance, what they can't take away is God Almighty. Spiritual inheritance. And, you know, a lot of things take place. A lot of things happen. But what's so interesting is that justice takes place because within itself, justice has purpose. That's why it's created. And if anything, justice is obedient to God Almighty. And so justice will reign in so many different ways, not just in my life, not just, you know, in different situations that we see. But it's about understanding that inheritance, legacy, what gets carried forward, you know, what is really meant to be carried forward. And so here, in reference to chapter 15, Abraham and in chapter 16, Sarai, they both were going through issues of legacy and fear. Okay? And so I want to read chapter 15 to a certain degree and and you know, like a like a painting. You know, a paint a picture can speak a thousand words, right? Um, and each person that looks at the painting get they can have their own opinion of, of their, they can have their own takeaway. <clears throat> Upon reading this, the first time I read this as I was doing my in-depth look <laughs> at chapter 16 in reference to gleaning the wisdom. And the, the underlying, the, the overall and the underlying ris, um, wisdom to be gleaned from chapter 16 from Sarai and Hagar is when your back is up against the wall, and you see people come against you for whatever reason. <clears throat> Do not lean upon your own understanding. Do not try to make fixers for situations 
that happened in your life. Cry out for God. Ask for the Holy Spirit and ask for guidance to be able to make your next step forward, okay? Because as a recap, when Sarai concocted this, and, and you know what? Go ahead and check out the video. But when Sarah decided to try to fix a problem, she had remorse. Okay? So here in chapter 15, the first time I wrote, I, I wrote it. <laughs> the first time I um, read it, really, my God was showing me something that I did not see before. And so I didn't want to jump the gun, so I decided to wait. And then as I was in the midst of doing my travels throughout my day, it came back to me. I was like, you know what? I meant, this is meant. I am meant to do this. <laughs> I meant to do this. Okay. So let's just read chapter 15. After these things, <clears throat> the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield. And thy exceeding great reward. <clears throat> and Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? <clears throat> and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. Now mind you, if you go into the Bible and you look under Genesis chapter 15, verses 2, the latter part, it says, is this Eleazar of Damascus? Verse 3, And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine ear. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine ear, but he that shall come forth <clears throat> out of thy own bowels shall be thine ear. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. Okay, let's stop there. So, the thing about it is just as Sarai was met with fear about their future legacy, so was Abram. And so to understand this is about Eliezer. So I was like, hmm. Why did it say of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? So I went in and I did my research. And now mind you, there's two different stories. There's two different draw takeaways from this. Um, but they're all in some way connected. So I'm just going to go for it. Just going to just dive in. Okay. So here, Abram is met with fear. And, and the first thing God Almighty said, look, fear not. Walk by faith and not by sight. Don't look at these situations and, and be in fear. Okay? Now, the thing about it is, is that at this point, as we, as we see here, he has no heir. He has no child of his own. Now, there was a servant, a steward, that was practically raised up in the household of Abram and his name was Eliezer but let's check it out Eliezer so I was like you know what's the name of Eliezer and so here here it says his name Eliezer and this is from Eliezer encyclopedia.com okay his name Eliezer of Damascus is interpreted as meaning that he drew from and provided others with his master's teachings now it gets even more interesting now from the surface layer or at one point you can see how Abram is saying that is my ear this Eliezer of Damascus you know now here 
interesting enough, it says his name, Eliezer of Damascus, is interpreted as a meaning that he drew from and provided others with his master's teachings. He even resembled Abraham in his physical appearance, and Laban mistook him for his master. Now, here's the thing. He was raised in Nimrod's court. Eliezer was presented to Abram after, um, after his miraculous deliverance from the fiery furnace. Eliezer alone went with Abram to rescue Lot, the gematria of his name being 318, the number of Abram's servants given in the Bible as constituting his army. Later, Eliezer visited Sodom, where he was victim of the injustices practices practice in the city of Sodom. Despite his admirable qualities, Eliezer still remained a member of the cursed Canaanite nation. This is why they say, is this. All right, Eliezer, okay. He is identified as one of the two lads who accompanied Abram and Isaac to Akeda and who remained at the foot of the Mount Moriah because they could not see the vision which was um, full safe to Abram and Isaac. Eli Eliezer was wrongly suspected of having defiled Rebecca during their journey from Haran. As a reward for successfully discharging his mission, he was emancipated by Abraham and given the kingdom of Bashan, over which he reigned under the name of Og. The curse resting upon Eliezer, as upon all descendants of Canaan, was transformed into a blessing because of his loyal service to Abraham. Um, his greatest re recom recompense was that God found him worthy of entering to paradise, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, but the thing is, beautiful soul family, is that one, Abram, as brought out here, one born in my house is mine ear. Okay, it says, and Abram said, verse 3, and Abram said, behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine ear. Okay, and then that's when God responded. The thing about it is beautiful, so family, <laughs> is that. Abram was worried about his legacy. And so he was trying to figure out, is it going to be this Eliezer? Because as we see here, as brought out in the encyclopedia, the Eliezer of Damascus, there was a curse because it's connected to Canaan. Okay? And, um, and, and that was worry. You see, the worry is about tomorrow. And Sarah was, was going through the same thing. I don't know if Sarah knew about it or not, but the um, Egyptian servants, they could not own their own land or inherit land or inherit anything, really. Okay? And so, again, this is about future legacy. Who who am I carrying the baton on to? It, it, you know, we may not think about it not right now, sadly enough, but back then... And really, now, it's important. And so the thing about it is, is that Laban even thought that Eliezer, because um, Eliezer was pretty much in Abram's household. He pretty much resembled Abram. He was taught the teachings, all right? And so Laban even thought that Eliezer, who was a steward, was uh, when, uh, was a master, was a lord, okay? And the thing about it is, is that one, first lesson here is, or slice of wisdom is, Abram, though he had fear, he went to God, okay? Again, go to God for instruction, for guidance, you know, Paul said in the New Testament that he is boastful. When he's in prayer, he's boastful to tell God of um, of the things that he was dealing with within his own life. Because God can help us to, to get through it. 
God helps to restore us. God helps us to, um, to heal situations that need to be rooted out. Okay. And in this way, when we go to God for everything, <laughs> okay, everything, God gives us guidance. Now, this is something that Abram was doing, but this is something that Sarai didn't do. And because Sarai didn't do this, she had remorse. And when Abram went to God, right, he got instruction. You see, that's the spiritual intimacy. That's the spiritual communion. God, I trust you. you God, you give me your peace. You know, I was in prayer. And I was, you know, there's so many things that happen in our life. And, you know, it's it's as you're in prayer and you're able to meditate. And what, what God was, what I gathered and re reflecting on and meditating on was the fact that, you know, it's like a person, you know, they gave you, they give you, let's say you need a pen, right? And they give you a pen from their possession. All right. And so God, you know, gives us, when we're in prayer, hallelujah, God, the almighty gives us restoration gives us healing gives us peace gives us strength what's so interesting god just was telling me and i felt a tingling right here is that you know satan satan gives to the people of the world what he does is he steals to give to others and they have that taste for it and so they of course they want more so they steal from others so that they can have the thing is is that um, they have forsaken themselves because within themselves they have their own blessings and some people s sell it out you know and so they want energy, so they take others. Anyways, that's a sidebar. <laughs> the thing about it is, is that God gives from his possession. He doesn't take from one person and another person and says, here, here's peace and here's strength and here's love. No. God gives from himself. He said, take of my peace and strength and love okay there's no stealing from anybody god is the creator okay and so as abram was going into prayer and there was fear and god said fear not you know i don't give you the spirit of fear fear not i give you soundness of mind <laughs> and this is what we give we see how he's getting soundness of mind right abraham is like is is my ear of this eliezer of Damascus who is has a curse upon him because of the Canaan right um you know because you I don't have a seed and I don't have a, a, an ear of my own and then God said listen fear not one I'm going to give you an ear and, you know it's it's just being in prayer and spirit and truth you know, there are people who, they commune and, and, and it's it's like lies. And it's deep down inside, they know it's lies, but they still carry it on for some weird reason. <laughs> right? But with God, God said, come to me in spirit and truth. There's no room for lies. Okay? Um, because that's how, that's how things get uprooted that you know he had uh, Abram had fear about his legacy so it had to be uprooted. God said, fear not. You know, and he got soundness of mind, you know, and he was restored and rejuvenated, okay? And the thing about it is, as I look deeper, as we found out about Eliezer, 
Eliezer grew up in the household and even resembled Abram. But he still was not the heir of Abraham. Now, what's so interesting is God was showing me something totally different. And this came to my mind again today. You know, the thing about it is, and I did this in a video a long time ago. Um, someone can look like you and someone can have the same teachings as you or profess to have the same teachings. But they're not you. Okay? And... When we go to God and we ask for clarity, that's what we get, clarity. There is no wandering, there's no fumbling in the dark. Um, there are people in this world that will try to look like you, talk like you, act like you, but they're not you. And they don't have the same calling. Now, even though Eliezer resembled Abram, there were still things that were obvious. And it may fool others, like it fooled Laban, but it doesn't fool God. God, and, and you should not be fooled as well. Um, this is why we have to go within. It doesn't matter how it looks on the outside. It's about what's going on on the inside. And and this is the two different things. It's like, you know, Abram was looking at things on the outside. Is this going to be my heir? This Eliezer of Damascus? And he was looking at things from a point of view that needed some more maturing. Okay? Um, he was looking at things, but he needed to utilize faith. You know, walk by faith and not by sight, right? But also, on another point, people can look at somebody and say, well, you know, this person has to look and um, they are saying the right words and da 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 They look good on the outside. But on the inside, that doesn't mean that they're called for the same purpose. And interesting enough to note, um, God seriously was showing me this on two different occasions. On that day that I was doing a video with Sarai and Hagar, and I said, you know what, God, I need further information. I don't want to jump the gun. Um, I don't want to, because God shows me a lot, but I want to stick to what God is saying. And so, again, it came back. And in terms of your future... In terms of your purpose, it's so important to go to God. It's so important to go within. It's so important to understand your value and your and your worth. Okay, because when you understand your value and your worth, um, <laughs> what's coming to mind is no half stepping. Ain't no half stepping. You you're just a full flow because you're in alignment with God Almighty, right? And so on the outside. Even Laban thought that Eliezer of Damascus was a serve or was a master, but he was not. And there are people that are like, well, I can look it, I can look like it, you know, like it's a role. I can look like it, I can sound like it, and I don't really have to go through the process and then be seen as such. But the thing about it is, is that it's about what's going on on the inside. You see, on the outside, Laban thought, well, he looks like Abram and he's got the same teachings, quote unquote, right? But what he was not seeing was how God was seeing both Eliezer of Damascus and Abram. And that's why the Lord said, no, the Eliezer is not your heir. Meaning, have no fear. It looks like one way, but it's not that way at all. In the same like manner, don't judge <laughs> a book by its cover. 
there are some people who are like, well, you know, I can go ahead and have the same hairstyle or I can look like, it's not just about women, it's men too. As, as brought out here, there's, you know, men and women, right? Um, oh, I can, I can wear the clothes that he wears and, you know, I could sound like him or I could sound like her. That's all on the outside. That has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on on the inside. And this is about spirit and truth. It's about, you know, what are, what work are you doing? What, um, what time are you setting aside to commune with God? You know, because nowadays we're seeing people can look and sound like such. But at the end of the day, they're not. You know, there are people, you know, when you're on your spiritual journey, there is no... I'm going to take a break. There's no... There's none of that. This is just your lifestyle, whether the camera is rolling or not. Okay? You, and, and, and that's the thing. We see how there are a lot of people who... They're different when, when they turn on the camera, they're one way. And when they turn off the camera, they're another way. And the thing about it is, is that when you're in a relationship with God and you're doing the work within, um, that is what exudes. And it's that je ne sais quoi. It's not about the quantity of how many people can look and sound that way and carry a title or whatever. It's about the quality. And here in chapter 15, this is why God is telling Abram, fear not. I have called you forth. It's about bloodline. You know, it's about not being part of a curse and being blessed. There's so much that goes into play. That even though Eliezer of Damascus looked like Abraham, sound like Abraham, he was not. And so that, that is the two different lessons that may or may not have to do with the same energy, but this is what I'm seeing from here. One, fear not. You know, like our fingerprints, they're different than anybody else. And it's so beautiful. In the Bible it says that I have created you before you were in the womb, your mother's womb, okay? And we have to understand that. God knows us, loves us, cares for us. And no matter how it looks on the outside, God sees you. This is why it's so important. You know, this is about being a good being a good steward. It's about having trust and having faith and knowing, you know what? God, what is it that you have for me? It's that intimacy. You and and, and the intimacy, the spiritual intimacy, the spiritual inheritance. You know what's so marvelous is that when you have a relationship with God. No one can take God away from you. No one can take the beauty of the salvation away from you. I have experienced a lot. And the one thing that brings joy to my heart is that, one, God has created me with purpose. And God is faithful and loyal and remembers his promises. And what's so marvelous is that there is no one that can do a spell against God and Jesus, you know, to deter them from loving me and you. There is no uh, amount of money that can swindle or, or pay someone off to pay God off. Okay, um, there is no, there is absolutely nothing 
that can deter God from loving you. And, and that's one thing that has strengthened me that I have seen in my life a lot of things. And it's about as you learn the different lessons in your life, you're able to see the contrast. Where other people have been deterred by means of spells or gossiping or whatever. None of these things can shake God's love for you. And so, however this, this is what I'm getting from here. Always go to God for guidance. Don't be led by fear. You know, don't judge a book by its cover. On the other part, you just... You may be able to get the same hairstyle or the same look, wear the same clothes, you know, speak the same talk. But the thing about it is that when it comes to God, when it comes to your purpose, it goes beyond dialogue. You're not a template. You're, you're the original. Okay? Satan brings about mimics. But when you have a relationship with God Almighty, it's not even so much about what you can get. It's about, God, you are in my life. That's restoring, rejuvenating within itself. So beautiful soul family, however you take this message, um, may it meet you where you stand. And have a beautiful and wonderful day. God bless.